Shalom, shalom. Keep the sheep, brother Yasir. Back with another lesson. Boy, well, will this video is edifying. I like to first start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rukakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, and shalom to the whole family. All right. And as you can see, today's lesson will be titled Giving Us a God Perspective. Okay. And uh, it's, it's really, it's not inspired by anything in particular. Just inspired by a lot of videos I've been watching from the elders and the brothers of Great Millstone. And, uh, how, uh, you know, everybody's in it. Every, uh, every brother's in the, in the, in the God perspective, man. Like, everybody, every brother giving their perspective from, from the, from the view of, of the Most High. All right, from the, from the view of the uh, Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Not their own perspective, not their own feelings, not their own vain opinion or thoughts, but from a, a, a God's, God's perspective. All right, and we get this God's perspective through the Spirit. All right, through the Spirit and power, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, man. So it was just something that was on my spirit, and uh, that decided to. Uh, do a quick lesson, Lord willing is quick and Lord willing is edifying. Okay, so first I just want to grab the definition of perspective. Okay, definition I already pulled up, so I can. Okay, perspective. This perspective. This is just a Google uh, definition, and I'm gonna read the second one. It's, and it reads: a particular attitude toward a way of regarding something, a point of view. All right, a particular attitude. All right, that particular attitude is the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. That 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 eyes to see and ears to hear. All right, let's get some of these words. see uh outlook view a viewpoint um attitude uh approach uh interpretation okay and we know we know we know what the scripture says that uh the scriptures the prophecy is of no improper interpretation right so let's let's grab that Peter 1 and 20. And it reads, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. All right. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. All right. See, no private interpretation. All right. Uh, you know, to those who have a God perspective, though. All right. See, no, no regular man came up with these prophecies. All right. No, no man, uh, three thousand years ago, no regular man wrote these things, these prophecies up. No, that these prophecies came. That, that you know, but these prophecies came by men of the Lord. All right, prophets. You know who. Who had that God respect of being moved by the Spirit, okay? And ultimately, this was, you know, those men was preordained. Those men was predestined, all right, to have that light, you know, to be moved by the Spirit, all right? And Lord will, those men back here today being moved through the Spirit again, all right? Okay? Having that same God perspective, okay? Uh, next precept. 13 and 6. And it's simple, but a classic, man. Uh, Matthew 13 and 6. Blessed, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. And you no, know, that's a you know, that's that, that's a precept that brothers read all the time, but it's very powerful because everybody don't see and hear the same, man. 
everybody, every, of course, everybody, you know, don't hear and see the same, but on a spiritual level, okay, we, we know brothers, brothers may have glasses, uh, vision, you know, be impaired through the vision, or brothers may, you know, be, you know, have a, uh, you know, slightly deaf or in one ear or other ear, you know, of course, but on a spiritual level, you know, the elect, the men of the Lord, they see one way and the world sees another way. The elect hear one way and the world hears another way. All right, we'll roughly paraphrase until you, uh, when they say, uh, say to the seer, see not, to the prophets, prophesy not. Okay, let's grab that. Awesome. Isaiah 30 and 10 it reads which say to the seers see not and these seers they have that God perspective all right and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things but speaking to us smooth things prophesy deceits okay so they don't want to hear they don't want to hear uh you know the, the destruction of Babylon they don't want to hear you gotta you can't eat those unclean foods. They don't want to hear you can't commit adultery and fornication anymore. They want to hear deceits. They, they want to hear smooth things. They want to hear, you know, lies. All right. But yeah, Matthew, Matthew 13, 16. Uh, say, uh, bless all your eyes for they see and for your ears for they hear. Man, that's a powerful precept. And see, see, see what, see, see what, see how the most high you have about you you know, and, and, and see what, you know, like I said, seeing how the most high see, all right? And hearing how, hearing how the Lord hears, okay? Let's grab this from First Samuel. Uh, first Samuel 16. And it reads, uh, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I had rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehem, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice the, sacrifice to the Lord. So the Lord told the Lord told uh Samuel, man, he, he got a king out, uh, he already got a king set up. All right, predestined, preordained. He got a king set up, uh, one of Jesse's son. Okay, and we know who that king to be. All right, let's continue reading. Three, and and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto him who I am named unto thee. And, and Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said. Come as thou peaceably, and he said, Peaceably I come to to I come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to to the sacrifice. I, I and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. So he called all he called Jesse and told Jesse, Hey, bring all your sons out here. All right, because he he knew what the Lord told him. Hey, it was king among amongst Jesse's sons. Okay, so this is six, and it came to pass. When they were came, when they come, he looked, he looked on Eli and said, Surely the Lord anointed anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not, look not on his countenance or on his height of his of his stature, because I re, I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. See, that's that God perspective. And ultimately, the Most High had gave Samuel that God perspective. Okay, so because at first Samuel was like, okay, surely, surely, what, what it reads, and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eli. I guess Eli was the oldest son, and he said, surely the Lord anointed is before him. So, so you know, Samuel thinking is, I guess, I guess it's the oldest brother, but no, the Lord said, hey, don't don't look on his statue, you know, because I refuse him. Yeah, but ultimately, the Lord ended up giving, you know, Samuel that God perspective, which us, you know, being men of the Lord, Lord will, we have that, that same perspective to see not as man sees, but as the Most High sees. All right. Most High look on the heart. He look on the spirit. All right. 
Let's read that again. Six. And it came to pass when they were come. Then he looked on Eli and said, Surely the Lord anointed his voice before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, on his height of his stature, because I had refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Eight. Then Jesse called uh, Ab Abinab and made him pass before Samuel. And he, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen, chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. And, the, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. Eleven. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, There remain yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. All right. Twelve. And he sent and he sent and brought him in. Now he was rooted and without of a brutal countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For this is he. See, the Lord had gave Samuel that God perspective and said, okay, this this is who the Lord was looking for. This, this is him. This, this is him. This is the king. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose up and went to Ramah. Okay. So, you know, this 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 is what us being men of the Lord search for and seek for, having that God perspective to, you know, to, you know, to see kings, all right, to see men of the Lord, you know, uh, something I used to always say, and I, I, and I heard it from the elders, but it, it, it was, it would, it's going to be obvious who the elect are in these last days, you know, because they're having that God perspective, okay, and in this, in this account, it was obvious that this was the king and the Lord set up. All right, you know, Sam, you're having that God perspective, okay? Um, like I said, you know, us us having that God perspective don't look on corner things, you know, such as height, appearance, uh, countenance, the flesh. We look on deeper things, you know, such as fruits, scripture, prophecy, the spirit, all right? We, we look on all things, all right? Uh, next precept. Because ultimately, you know, us being spiritual men, all right, as the Lord, we have to look on all things, okay? Get this. Let's get this in 1 Corinthians 2 and 15. And it reads, But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Alright. You know, like I said, us being that spirit, we, we can't be judged by anyone because, because they can't receive the things of the spirit. So us being the spirit, they can't judge the things of the spirit because they don't understand the spirit, alright? But again, us in the spirit judge all things. We consider all things. We discern all things, alright? Us having that mind of the Lord, you know, being the exact reason why they don't understand us. Okay, why why they can't judge us because they couldn't judge the Lord, which which they tried to. All right, you know, and and same way, like I said, same way they don't understand us. The same way they understand the Lord. Same way, you know, some of us will be persecuted. All right, so you know, Lord will. This video was edifying. Until next time, man. Uh, like to close out, give all praise. I need glory to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Shalom and shalom to the whole full leg.